four reasons why natural gas prices are up. Uh, always interesting to look at natural gas around the winter time and its seasonally volatile period. We'll get to that in a second, but here's where we're at. A natural gas market that since last winter has absolutely been annihilated, fallen from about $9 down to its lows, well below three, traded close to $2, but didn't quite get there um, in the spring and summer of this year. Um, but now natural gas trading well over $3 and, and uh, some of the highest prices that we've seen since uh, February and March of 2023 and, and no coincidence, the timing on those previous highs and why we're seeing them now. We'll get into the seasonal aspect in just a second, but just pure price action back above $3, up more than 30% in the last three weeks, seeing uh, definitely a vote of confidence here. Um, and maybe you know, reason number one being just price action, right? Like, like, especially in the commodity space and the interest rate space and the foreign exchange space, you'll see a lot of mean reversion. Now, a market can theoretically go wherever it wants. But when you're talking about crude oil or natural gas, or you're talking about 10-year interest rates, or you're talking about uh, euro versus US dollar, these are markets that have been around for so long. And the standards for these products have relatively speaking, not changed at all, right? A, a U.S. 10-year Treasury yield is a U.S. 10-year Treasury yield the same as it was in the aughts, the 90s, and, and uh, beyond. Same for barrels of crude oil and natural gas um, as well. And so with that, you have markets that, of course, fluctuate. And you have here a commodity market that is one of the most volatile uh at your fingertips, so to speak. I mean, it's a market that has gone from $9 to $3 and could get back to $9 if it wanted to, or it could get cut in half once again. It's been cut in half multiple times over the course of the last year. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, like I say, these are markets that the standards for which have not changed that much relative to the S&P 500, whose top sector, top stocks, fluctuates all the time. Um, and you look at it in the 2000s, you look at it in the 2010s, you look at it now, the top stocks change, um, the environment for those stocks change, and you don't have a market that, in the grand scheme of things, uh, tends to see the same prices. Whereas crude oil will see you know, $100, it'll see $20 or $30. But if you widen out that lens, it trades somewhere in the you know 40s 50s 60s 70s uh for a majority of the time same with natural gas so reason number one a little bit of a price reaction uh from the lows a little bit of a mean reversion uh so to speak um, but it doesn't have to continue higher you can always see new lows in that market um, but also i want to rope in some of the seasonal volatility aspect because you look at the last several years here in natural gas futures prices and you'd be remiss if you didn't point out that aside from 2022, um, where you saw a bunch of wackiness around, um, you know, energy prices, supply and demand dynamics, throwing that out. 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022, uh, going into 2022, that is, we're seeing some of the greatest volatility and peaks and also troughs in prices right as those years, the prior years ending, and the new year is starting. I highlighted here um, some of the biggest movements of the last several years, and they're all, as you notice, if you look at that x-axis, they're all falling right before that year marker, which is telling you that's happening October, November, December of each of those years um, that you're seeing a lot of volatility kick in, and that's because demand for natural gas fluctuates wildly in those winter months. What are some of the biggest uses of natural gas? Well, it's, it's heating buildings. And, and when are we primarily using that type of functionality um, is in those winter months. And, and so 
traders of this market watching like a hawk for changes in winter forecasts, big snowstorms in, in large cities in the US. Um, oh, it's not gonna be as cold as, as we thought. Oh, it's gonna be way colder than we thought. Um, and that bringing with it fluctuations in demand for this commodity and thus fluctuations in price for this commodity. And so you got the price action piece, you got the seasonal volatility piece, and then you also have here the natural gas futures forward curve. Now this is the current price for natural gas across the next couple of years of expiration. Um, and, and what you're seeing is kind of a similar story, is, is a hump in prices right around the November, December, January, February range. And um, so what we just looked at, kind of historical volatility in those winter months, now we're looking forward to futures prices. Um, and you can see that you know, for this upcoming winter, so the November, December, January, and February, um, prices for futures right now, you see a jump of, you know, from 320, 330 up to as high as 360, 380. So about half a dollar, which is still a lot, you know, the traders of these futures expecting that natural gas um, will be more expensive in those months, the price will go up. Uh, therefore, spot natural gas, the futures have already priced that in. Um, but then you look out to uh, next winter and the winter beyond next, and you can see more than a dollar's worth of higher futures prices in those time periods, climbing as high as 475, 480 in the winter of 2025 going into 26. And so there you have, you know, the price action piece of where we've been the last several months, the historical seasonal volatility of the last several years, and then the futures forward curve telling you that prices are expected to be higher this winter and next winter and the one after that. Um, and then finally bringing in the expectation for where we can go, because you know it's all well and good to take a look at historical price action in natural gas and look at the forward curve for where futures prices are pricing this commodity in the next few months, in the next few years, um, but none of those things have to come to fruition you can one, see two sides of this market. You can see this market not necessarily have to rise in the winter, but if it comes out, there's you know less snow, less cold than expected this winter, this market can absolutely move in the other direction. So let's try to wrap around a reasonable um, set of metrics for where natural gas could be going and um, and you'll see here again that airing on the upside of natural gas. We'll get to that in a second, but uh, implied volatility telling you that this market is due to be its most volatile, or at least traders are pricing in that it'll be its most volatile in the December, January, and February range. And there's always, uh, historically, there's been a drop off in volatility from February to March. You see that huge drop off because yeah, the difference between 65% in November, 68% in December is marginal, uh, but then the difference between February and March, quite large, relatively speaking. Um, and so it, it'll be interesting because it feels like we've gotten ahead of winter uh, more and more every year. And now it's, it's not even mid-October and natural gas is already kind of starting to jump. Um, whereas traditionally, um, futures traders do look for that January, February to be some of the most volatile. So we'll see if that comes to fruition. Right now, options saying that we're due to rise in volatility consistently until January and then fall off slightly and then really fall off March. And then I'm sure April, May, June, much less fluctuations in demand around this uh, primarily winter commodity. So is it reasonable to look at equidistant highs and lows in this market. 
Um, you know, right now priced a little bit north of three dollars is four dollars reasonable. Uh, I mean, if you take out twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two, this market hasn't really gone further than four or five dollars to the upside, and it hasn't really gone further than two dollars by much uh, to the downside. Or where is uh, the market for futures options pricing in the highs and lows, and again, skewed to the upside. Another reason why uh, people are set up for natural gas moving higher, the one standard deviation options, the 16 delta options for the January 26, 2024 options expiration um, is right now saying that $3 is that one standard deviation low and $7 is that one standard deviation high. Now, does that mean that the market has to go up or is more likely to go up? No, but it does tell you that traders of futures options for uh, this winter here in natural gas are definitely skewed to the upside, given that this market is just north of three bucks and the 16 delta options, the one standard deviation put options are right around three bucks and the call options are right around seven. So very lopsided um, uh, potential here and definitely some call skew in this market. But there are uh, a few reasons why uh, people are pricing in more expensive natural gas.